Hey, superstars, it's your best friend, Scott. Happy opening day. This is our March recap. We got lots to go over today, including way too many care packages, some pretty cool purchases. But first, we have uh, some video responses for Stukes and for Decon. So let's do this. Scott at Stukes Baseball Cards and Curiosities is celebrating 100 subs by asking about our local sports legends. Stukes is pretty awesome, so you should definitely check him out. But he's from North Dakota and Minnesota, so not quite as cool as being from Northeast Ohio, but at least he's got a great name. And I'm totally kidding. But uh, I picked out four local legends. Unfortunately, I don't have a card for the first one, being Larry Zonka. I went to the same high school as Zonka, but I've been toying with the idea of doing a player run of his cards. But I just haven't pulled the trigger yet. And I've, I've almost bought his rookie card like four times, but I always seem to get drawn back into baseball cards. And for basketball, then, there's this guy, LeBron James. I don't know if you've heard of him or not. He's from Akron, and I live in a suburb of Akron. Mrs. Reindeer actually taught at St. Vincent St. Mary High School while he was going to school there and love him or hate him, but he's always supported his hometown. He even started a school for underprivileged inner city kids, so we love him around here. And for baseball, there's Thurman Munson. He was from Canton, about a half hour south of where I am. He tragically crashed his plane at the Akron Canton Airport. And the first baseball games I went to were double A games at Thurman Munson Memorial Stadium. And I can't do this without mentioning Cy Young. He's from Newcomerstown, Ohio, about an hour south, really tiny farm town, but it's neat. I've been to the annual Cy Young Festival there, and I visited his gravesite, and we drove by the last house that he lived in and that sort of thing. I don't think a lot of people that live here realize that he was so close, but that's definitely part of my fascination with him. This one, one, get it, is for D. Ah! who's just celebrating the fact that not all graded one cards are created equal, and he wants to see our favorite ones. So some ones deserve ones, like this Venezuelan Bob Feller, a super cool card that I'm happy to own in any grade. And then there's this 53 Satch here. This is a card that I won, get it? We're venturing into vintage sanctuary territory here, but since I won it, it's appropriate that it is a one. And this is another one of those cards that I tend to show off for every VR. But my Nat portrait is a great one. It was a scrapbook card. I just love scrapbook cards because they're often super sharp compared to some of those cards that just rattled around in kids' shoeboxes for 70 plus years. And here's another scrapbook card, although not graded. This loot is just gorgeous. But back to ones. Doug and I both own a Diamond Stars Earl Averill, so I know he'll like this one. This card is super clean and super sharp, and because some kid punched a heart-shaped hole in it, I got to buy it for 20 bucks, and I couldn't be happier with it. Adam at Vintage Sanctuary noticed that I had a crystal ball in one of my last videos and he wanted to ask it a question. And as they say, me crystal ball as Sue crystal ball. So he wanted to know if Eddie Lopat should have gotten the Babe Ruth award in the 1951 World Series. Now Lopat won two of the Yankees four wins, so we'll see what the crystal ball has to say. I've seen a lot of baseball and nothing was more exciting than the dead ball era where the game was about speed and contact putting the ball in play and aggressively running the bases and looking for ways to outsmart your opponent rather than dumb brute force. So in a sense, Babe Ruth ruined baseball and to name the World Series MVP award after that big galoot is ludicrous. So for Lopat's performance, he should have won the Ty Cobb award or better yet, the Stan Kowaleski award. Now there is a World Series performance. Um, there you go, Adam, straight from the crystal ball's mouth. If it had a mouth, let's move on. My best friend, Math Bowler, comes by to hang out all the time, so I don't know why he mailed this to me, but I'm not complaining. But it says, hey, Scott, congratulations on your well-deserved Hall of Fame career. I've enclosed some items for you that could go into your PC or be your next telephone, a mossy phone. Take care, your best pal, Math Bowler. And there's an awesome little doodle of me. And oh yeah, it's mossy time. Here's the 63 Tigers Twirlers card and the 62 Post. Both of them signed and Math knew I didn't have either one. So cool, Steven. Thank you, sir. 
If you couldn't tell, this one is from my best friend Andy from Flying Dutchman Cards. Really fun envelope. It says, I'm a big wiener from the third annual Packapalooza. It's a uh, really fun annual live stream where Andy and Doug from Don't Talk to Robots give away packs and packs and packs of cards. And the best part is the Flying Dutchman sticker, but let's take a look at these packs. Here's some triple play, and I won't subject you to that. Uh, 93 Pinnacle with Carlos Baerga in the front there. Stadium Club, 92 Fleer Ultra. And Andy makes up some theme packs, so these are all rated rookies. And he made this 90 Fleer pack of art cards in my honor. Here's some 92 Upper Deck and another pack of Ultra. These will be a lot of fun when I start TTMing again, so thanks, Andy. This one is more of a contest win than a care package, but I feel like the odds were stacked in my favor. Um, I was watching a live stream the other day, and it might have been 3D 80s kids uh, goonies in the outfield, but forgive me if I'm wrong. Uh, anyway, my best buddy Rick from Vintage Oddball Cards pops in, and they were talking about T205s, and Rick says he'll give one away to whoever can name all the misfits. Now, I'm not a misfit, but I am a misfit stalker, so I knew it was Rick, Don, George, James, Lou, Bob, and John, and bam, a T205 was in my mailbox because Rick is awesome. It says, Scott, sorry it's not a Cleveland card, but it is a beautiful beater card. Your best pal, Rick. And we got Tom Jones. <laughs> No apologies necessary, Rick. That's very, very cool. Thanks so much. Like I said, silly amount of care packages this month. This one's from my bestie, Jason Aaron Goldberg. It says, hey, Scott, just some delicious shenanigans for a fellow licorice lover, plus some cards. I don't know if you're like me, but these remind me of the long ropes of kind of stale licorice I used to get at games as a kid. Thanks for your support of the scholarship and for being an all-around superstar, your best friend, Jag. Aw, you're the superstar, buddy. Let's see, we got cards and licorice, best day ever. Uh, Jose, Jose, Charlie, Carlos, and Albert. I think they made these cards just to show off Albert's mad eyes. And look at that cool Kenny hologram, that's very rad. And Jag sent me a bag of Red Vines Red Ropes, which I hadn't tried, but they were very tasty. Thanks, Jason. Very, very awesome stuff, amigo. This was more of a trade than a care package, but I was at my LCS and I saw some Texas Rangers autographs and I texted my best friend Chase to see if he wanted them and he did and he sent me this in return. This is a Rangers Indians ticket stub from 1993. The Indians won that night 8-3. to three. Sorry Chase, but uh, he got the manager Mike Hargrove and Carlos Bayer got to sign the ticket stub. Very fun. Thanks Chase. This one's from my best friend, John, the 3D 80s kid. He says, Scott, I just had some feeling this card linked us in some way. Your best friend, John. I am intrigued, John, and this is awesome. John's a rookie card, and here's a 1957 Vic Wurtz. I see what you're doing. John's favorite player is Willie Mays, who famously made that catch in the 1954 World Series. Wurtz pounds the next pitch over Willie Mays' head, but there goes Willie. And he makes a miraculous catch as he stops a step short of the wall. But it was my Indians that were playing the Giants in that series, and it was Vic Wirtz that hit that ball. So John's kind of rubbing in a 69-year-old World Series wound. But it's hard to get mad when he's sending me cool cards like this one. So thanks, John. And last care package. This one's from my bestie Jason, or Mr. Fisherbike if you're nasty. Another card crew giveaway entry for Spidey. It says, Scott, you the man. Enjoy, my friend, your best friend, Jason. No, Jason, you the man. We got a Bowman Francisco, Yu Chang rookie, and a sweet MFB custom. I love that. And a top Strata Cord Kluber auto. These Strata cards were so cool. I have a few of them, but not this one. Awesome sauce, Jason. Thanks, dude. Everybody's best friend Tony Black was out shopping recently and he texted to ask if I wanted this. Uh, Mr. Reindeer, looking at comps after I got home, I think you got an H-E double hockey sticks of a deal on this feller card. I signed the back of the Jack Fisher card. If you want to do the same, you can, but if not, into the bike spokes it goes. Your bestie and favorite Cubs fan, Tony. So here's the 54 Bowman feller I bought. I think it was eight bucks, so super sweet deal there. And Tony found this well-adorned Jack Fisher, so he signed it, and I signed it, and now it'll make its way around YouTube land eventually. Thanks for the assist, Tony. Okay, eBay stuff. When I finished the Don Mossy autographed run, I thought I should get serious about my Al Rosen autograph run. These don't count because they're reprints, but they were too cheap to pass up. I think they were 10 bucks delivered for the pair, and I also picked up this 75. Not a playing days card, but it is a base card, and I'll just say Dylan made me do it. 
And Doug made me buy these, the big cards from 1939. I think we got football, cycling, cricket, I believe. And this dude shooting an arrow straight up into the air. And this dude who failed his gun safety class. And there's the big Lebowski there. Walter doesn't roll on Shabbos, though. I don't roll on Shabbos, Walter. Here's a signed index card from Larry Gardner. I picked up from my 1920 World Series roster project. Larry was a pretty good hitter. He batted 310 that year with 118 RBI, but he was a lousy base stealer. In 1920, he stole three bases and got caught 20 times. You see what happens? You see what happens, Larry? You see what happens? Great. See what happens, Larry? From my LCS, I bought a couple of Phil Necros for his player run, and they have a big box of wacky packages that I keep grabbing cards from. Here's Hawaiian Punks, Girl RD Feminist Spaghetti, Cram, Hertz Ketchup, Hostile Thinkies, that one's my favorite, uh, Kentucky Fried Fingers, and Reco Wafers. There's a new project there. Speaking of projects, I said I was going to also start a Thurman Munson player run, and I haven't made any progress on that until B. Roth sold me this rookie. So I've got this one and the 71, so I imagine the rest shouldn't be too hard. And I went to my monthly local card show, which I haven't done in a while, and I didn't buy any cards in quotation marks, but I did buy a 1962 Don Mossy stamp panel, and I bought a 51 Tops pack wrapper. I'd never bought any pack wrappers before, but I was a little surprised that you can easily find these 51s for about 20 bucks. So like, go buy one right now because they're really cool. And speaking of cool, I also picked up a 1934 Gaudi wrapper. This one was not $20, but I was pretty excited about that one too. So that's it for now. Thanks to Stooks and Deke yeah! for cool VRs to do. Thanks to Math Buller, Flying Dutchman Cards, Vintage Oddball Cards, Jason Aaron Goldberg, Chasen Inc., 3D 80s Kid, and Mr. Fisher Bike for all the super rad care packages. And thanks to Tony Black and B. Roth for the assist. And as always, thank you guys for watching. I've got a big four-year anniversary announcement coming soon. But in the meantime, enjoy your hobby by making it unique to you. Shabbos!